Welcome back to the Matt Chim Experience 103. So, I just was thinking and I'm going to share some of my notes I took on a video yesterday because it was very helpful and I would love it if somebody else could get the knowledge that I got out of this video as well. So, what did I learn? I'll tell you what I was watching. I was watching a motivational video talking and it was Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson was talking and it was one of those, you know, uh, edits where somebody put some music, you know, Jordan would talk about lines or some shit and the guy would edit lines across the screen, whatever. But I was just really listening to what Jordan was saying and taking the lessons of what he was saying, you know, trying to understand what he's saying. And what he was talking about in this video was basically how to be successful. That was the topic. How to be successful. I think a better way of putting you know, that, that title works. I think it's true. That title, it conveys what this message that Jordan conveyed, that title it literally is. Literally is what it is. How to be successful. But I think a better title or an alternative title for this video could be how to be effective. And I like the word effective a little better. Let me just show you the definition of effective. So you see, I use my dictionary app a lot, but I want to show you the definition. Let me look it up here. Effective. So the definition of effective, it's an adjective and it is adequate to accomplish a purpose. Adequate to accomplish a purpose. You're going to get what you want to get done, done. So how do you become effective? Well, Jordan said that the two most highly correlated things with success were number one, IQ. Number two, conscientiousness. So if those are the two most correlated things that we know of, what do we do about this? Well, you know, logically we would try to increase our IQ and increase our conscientiousness. Okay. Okay. Well, this is where things get murky because IQ and conscientiousness have a very big genetic component. Not everybody's born like Einstein. Not everybody has a 160 IQ. Jordan Peterson has 160 IQ. I might have 100, 110, something like that. 120 maybe if I'm lucky, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but the average person has an IQ of 100. So 50% 50 peop 50 of people are below 100 already or something like that. Maybe it's Maybe it's not exactly 50%, but something close to it. Um, so can we raise it? The answer is no. It's kind of fatalistic. There's only one thing we can do and it's be healthy, reach our IQ potential and to stop it from decreasing by stopping negative habits. And the best habit you can incorporate so that you can maintain your IQ because once you hit the age of, I think you said 14, but really by 20, your IQ is going down. You reach a peak at 20. So I'm 21 right now. I'm already past my peak. Dang. <laughs> so how do you how do you stop your peak from, you know, how do you stop it from going down too much? And the way you do that is through exercise, anaerobic like cardio and the other one. Uh aerobic, oh, sorry, anaerobic is like uh hitting the gym, you know, lifting weights, some strength resistance. And then there's aerobic, which is like cardiovascular, like running, skipping rope, something like that. That's all we have for IQ. And that's it. That's the end of the topic on IQ. Conscientiousness. We have another. So conscientiousness, if you're not familiar with it, it's a personality trait. You can break it down different ways. You can break it down into four subcomponents. Jordan Peterson breaks it down into two. And uh, I'm just going to break it down into two for now. Um, but you can further divide this. You can divide it further than four different elements as well. But the two things that largely make up conscientiousness is your ability to work hard. That's called industriousness. Your ability to work hard. Work ethic. And in, in the psychological literature, I guess you could say, in the psychological, so excuse me, psychology talk, they call it industriousness. The other part of conscientiousness, this personality trait, is organization. That one's pretty self-explanatory. 
those are the two parts of conscientiousness. Now, if this personality trait is largely genetic, again, and depends on your experiences growing up, how can you now change it? Well, the answer to that is working on the micro habits that make up industriness and organization. So let's get into it. What are the micro habits that can increase your work ethic? The first one, set a goal. The, the status quo is doing nothing. The status quo is not doing something. The status quo is doing nothing. And we have a bias called the status quo bias. We want to stay at the status quo. We need a good reason to do something. If you don't have a valued goal that you're pursuing, why do anything? Seriously, if you don't have anything that you're looking at that you want to do, why would you do it? Oftentimes, people don't set valued goals. There's many reasons for this, but one of the consequences of not setting a valued goal is you get lazy. You get, you turn into the ship with no sail. All right, you're in the ocean, you're still floating around. You don't have a map. You don't have anybody navigating you, pointing you towards anything. And why bother? You know, you're in the ocean anyways. It's not like you're trying to go anywhere. Why don't you set up a goal? Well, there's a few reasons why. For some, it might be that you just never thought of it. Straight up, you never were educated that setting a goal was a good idea. It's, it's funny. It's for others, you, you might have been educated that you might have been told, you know, setting a goal is a good idea. Maybe you weren't really educated on it and you didn't know the reasons for why you might not have seen any reason for why set a goal but for a lot there's also a negative side to this when you set a goal you set up parameters for success and failure and when you leave it all fa vague and foggy you can't fail and people are afraid to fail and that is largely you know there's lots of reasons for this but one reason we're conditioned that way from the school system the way it's set up I'm not sure the solution to this I think uh, Jordan and Ty Lopez present some pretty good solutions there's many people that are but let's not get too off topic so setting a valued goal it gives you motivation it makes you work harder make sure your goal is specific you need to actually say you have to say quote you have to say this when you think of your goal that's worth doing you know, that's worth it. If it's vague, you're not going to say that. You got to make it specific and you got to make it, you know, dream big, man. Whatever. One year from now, dream big. Three to five years from now, pick your time frame. Ty Lopez and, and Peter Drucker in managing, one, managing Oneself basically says that 18 months is the best time frame to think of your life in. That's about, you know, once you get into the 10 year goals, it's just too far away. And, you know, six months, you can't do enough type thing. So 18 months around there, choose a specific goal you would like to see yourself in. I'll give you an example for myself. I, I did some work on this. I had to choose a specific valued goal that I would value. I'm 21 right now. So when I'm about September next year, I want to be able, I have it written up on my whiteboard here. I'll see if you're on YouTube, I'll show you. I have it written on my whiteboard there. If you can see my one big goal, travel Canada in a van making money online. That's my goal. That's my only goal for the next year and a half. How am I doing that? Basically. And that, I'm not going to get into how I'm doing that, but I will say how it's affected me. And it's given me more energy. I wake up with a little pep in my step now. I don't wake up as drowsy as, as I once did before. And it, when, whenever, you know, there's times where I need to nap, where I can't work, but whenever I'm not doing something and I'm like, okay, what should I do right now? I always look to my board and I see the thing that, I, and I think, yeah, that would be worth it. For me, I don't know what it is. I have this itch to travel. That would be worth, you know, going for. So it's been pretty fun having this thing to work towards. It's given my life some purpose, right? Because before I had this, and it's kind of funny, you know, so it's, it's not a like, it's not an especially special goal. I wouldn't say it's especially like grandiose at all. But before I had this, I was playing video games every day. And, you know, I'd work, I'd make my money, I would survive, but it wasn't the same. 
and it's given me more work ethic. I put more time into it because it's worth more in my mind. All right, let me see. I'm going to go through my notes here. Another per to picking your picking a, a a specific valued goal for yourself. Use your temperament in your decision making process. We have a temperament. We have a personality that we're dispositioned for. If you have high extroversion, make sure your goal has lots of friends. You probably want lots of friends. If you have high agreeableness, your specific goal probably involves an intimate relationship. If you have high openness, your specific goal needs some creative expression for yourself because you're high in openness. This is what you were, your your temperament wants you or what you're most dispositioned to do naturally. Use that to your advantage. If you have high neuroticism, you need high security, okay? If you're highly neurotic, you can't do something that's going to cause you to feel all this negative emotion all the time. If you're highly disagreeable, you would excel in competition. Those are the five little traits that Jordan gave in the video. There might be more, but this is a starting ground. The other thing you can do when looking to find out how you can set a valued goal Look at what other people across time have set valued goals on. Look to what other people are doing, you know. And that's a good way to find out. And basically the, the dimensions of life people generally, uh, they have valued goals for. And you should be pretty much operating on, if not all of these, at least three of these or you're getting nowhere fast. Family, your friends, your career. You need educational goals plans for what you would do outside of work attention to mental and physical health and that's it you need three of these at least you need to have most of them really and you just have to incorporate incorporate that in your life ty lopez uses a different uh a quick and dirty method for figuring out the dimensions of life health wealth love and happiness where love encompasses friends family and romance health physical and mental, wealth, your career, your educational goals, love, your friends, your intimate relationships, your family, and then happiness. Happiness is really the coalition of all those things together. The one thing that Ty Lopez's quick and dirty method doesn't talk about, but Jordan made a point to say, was plans for time outside of work. Sometimes we get caught up in this uh, game. There's some truth to it. Some people are meant to work 80 hours a week. Some people are meant to work 40. Some people are meant to work 20, whatever. And, you know, I'm not going to get too deep into this because s sometimes you're meant to work 20, but you need to work 40 right now to get to that point. But that's beside the point. Um, so that's how you increase your industriness, choosing a valued goal and customizing it to your temperament and using the common dimensions of life that other people have used to set up valued goals as a guide for yourself and choosing one that you actually want and not something that somebody's putting on you. So choose something you actually want though. Choose something you actually want. You want something. And why that's so important is once you do that, you, you pick your valued goal. For me, it's travel a van, Canada and a van, making money online. Then the next thing you do is you take that big goal and separate it into a bunch of little micro processes, a micro goals. So I want to travel. I need to get a van. I need to figure out how to survive in this van. Really, I need to get a certain amount of money so that I can survive for that. I plan on traveling for a year, so I need to survive for a year. I need to learn about how to make money online and spend the next year and a half really focusing on ways, thinking, trying, executing on different ways I can make money online. I'm taking this big goal and I'm making it into micro goals. And then you can keep going. You can go further, right? So I need to get a van. I need to get money to get that van, my first goal. I need to get money. I need to work to get that money for that van. It's through this process that you can start to activate your 
dopamin, dopamin, dopaminergic system when you start doing these micro goals because you'll see yourself getting closer to your big goal. You get a little dopamine in your brain, right? It's a feel-good hormone. Dopamine is also known as a hormone that makes you go forward. It will make you keep doing that thing and you get... As you do it more, you get more dopamine and it keeps you moving towards your valued goal. So you break it into chunks, okay? And then when you break it in chunks, how do you do that? Well, take some time to brainstorm it and then start scheduling your day so that you can do these little chunks and do as much as you can bite off, okay? Don't, my goal is to travel Canada in a van making money online. I don't necessarily have to get a van in one day or I don't have to necessarily learn how to make money in one week online. I have to do it in a personalized way at chunks that I know I can bite off. And you know, I'm, you know, when you start out you're poor, you're wretched, you're a piece you're a worthless piece of like turd basically. So that's pretty harsh and you need some humility to admit how little you can actually get done in a day to start and then you work on it every day, 0.5% better, you know, and eventually you, you hit a point, you know, I, I remember when I started out, I've actually played Red Dead Redemption for 30 hours out of 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. And to me, the idea, like now I don't even play one, I don't play one minute of video games today, but the idea that I would not have the urge just to play video games all day seemed foreign. How did I get out of it though? Choosing a valid goal, you know, playing Red Dead Redemption, it, it honestly wouldn't even activate my dopaminergic system as much anymore because it's not getting me to my goal of traveling Canada in a van making money online. It's something I just want to do. It just seems really fun. It'd be really cool. And yeah, so organize it, break it into chunks. You know, you're like organizing when you start, you put it on a paper and you break it into chunks and then you start scheduling it for what you can actually accomplish. Schedule it and don't make the schedule so bloody tight and so bloody miserable that you don't do it. Make it something you can do. How I started scheduling, I didn't start with Google Calendar, although Jordan Peterson says to start with Google Calendar. I didn't start with Google Calendar. What I found worked best for myself, and I still do it today, is I have a little white, I have a little notebook here, just like one of those Hillroy ones that you probably used in school, and I'll write the date, and I'll just write, you know, the night before or in the morning, whenever. I'll just write anything I want to get done in the day. So I'll just read a couple other things on my list to give you an idea. I got to work at SMU. I got to make my bed. I got to do, I got an appointment with Diane I have to go to. I have to write an opportunity slash vehicle statement for uh, online opportunity I'm trying to do. Let me just fix the lighting here. I have to book a time to go to the gym. I have to go to the gym tonight. These are just things that I have to do. And to be honest, all this stuff is stuff that I want to do because I know it's going to get me closer to traveling Canada in a van making money online. So that's all I have for you right now. I would love it if you made it this far to leave a comment somehow. I would love, you know, this is stuff I love to talk about. So anybody that comments, you know, I'm definitely going to come back and respond. Enjoy your day, guys. And as always, I'll see you next time. Maybe not. <laughs> Bye-bye.